You ever notice the far right has a thing about Vikings? Such a thing that when the British anti-racist watchdog group, Hope Not Hate, wanted to investigate the far right, their tactic was to send an undercover Swedish man to go and drink mead with them. Think about it a little and it starts to make sense. I mean the Vikings were a fierce warrior culture, dating back to a time when men were men and Europe was European. By which they mean white, because of course they do. It's easy to see the appeal. I mean even if you're not a white nationalist, and I most definitely am not, Vikings are pretty cool. They're like a more heavy metal version of pirates. White nationalists can't have pirates though, because up to a third of them were black or mixed race. The reason for that is that pirate crews would capture slave ships in the Atlantic, and the human cargo would then become crew. In fact, it's just thought that Blackbeard's ship, the Queen Anne's Revenge, was a former slave ship. Also, there were women pirates, though for that matter there were women Vikings. By the end of this video, you'll probably agree with me that the far right shouldn't have Vikings either. In fact, there are groups in Scandinavia right now trying to reclaim their heritage from the far right. Now, my father recently had one of those ancestry DNA tests, and I found out that my genetic heritage is a lot more Scandinavian than I realised. So I guess perhaps I could be part of that reclaiming too. <sighs> Let's start with Dorothy Kim. Kim is a professor of medieval literature at Brandeis University in Massachusetts. She's become one of the leading figures in medieval studies pushing back against the far right's attempt to claim this history for themselves. She has a book coming out later this year called Medieval Studies in Whiteness. Kim wrote an opinion piece for Time titled White Supremacists Have Weaponized an Imaginary Viking Past. It's time to reclaim the real history. She points out that most of what we know about Vikings comes from popular culture rather than actual history, such as the popular TV show Vikings and Viking adjacent video games. Okay, so probably not that one. What I found most interesting from her article was that the contemporary alt-right aren't the first people to try and claim Viking history for their own purposes. Kim writes about the Volkisch movement, a form of romantic German nationalism that emerged in the late 19th century. She mentions in particular Wilhelm Gronbach, whose book, The Culture of the Teutons, is available online in translation and has influenced a number of far-right neo-pagan groups. Grunbach imagined a Germanic genealogy stretching back through the Viking past and even further to the Roman Senate at Tacitus. Authors like Gustav Nickel, a German scholar of Old Norse, and Nordicist Bernhard Kummer believed that Germanic society was in decline thanks to socialists and Jews. These ideas influenced a later 20th century German nationalist movement. Have you guessed which one? The Nazis believed that the Germanic race was superior to all others and that the roots of European civilization were in the Nordic countries. They promoted the idea that the Nordic Ruin alphabet was the original European alphabet from which all other writing systems were descended from. This is totally inaccurate, by the way. While each ruin is roughly analogous to a letter or a syllable, the Nazis attached specific meanings to some of them. For example, the S ruin or the Sun ruin was renamed as the Sig ruin, meaning victory, and used as the symbol of Hitler's SS. The O ruin uh, was said to represent Blut und Boden, or blood and soil. Remember the protesters chanting that at the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville? As an aside, I'd recommend the video The Rising Tide, Fascism and Extreme Music by another New Zealand-based YouTuber, Conquest of Dread. Link in the description. That video looks at the way the far right has infiltrated the heavy metal scene, and in part talks about how some of these far right bands are using Norse symbols that I've talked about, as well as other pagan symbols, to dog whistle to their far right fan base. Vikings are pretty metal, but sometimes a rune isn't just a rune. I said at the start of this video that the far right likes to harken back to a time when Europe was European. But Europe during the Viking Age wasn't as they imagine it. The Viking Age roughly coincides with the Abbasid Caliphate. And we know from historical and archaeological evidence that these two societies had extensive contact with each other. Much of that contact occurs via the Volga trade route, which linked the caliphate on the southern shores of the Caspian Sea to northern Europe via the Volga River. The historical record mostly consists of Arabic writings, such as those from Ahmed bin Fadlan, a diplomat who travelled from Baghdad, the caliphate's capital, to the country of Volga, Bulgaria, not to be confused with modern-day Bulgaria, after the country's king converted to Islam. 
Yeah, medieval Europe contained not only Muslims, but Muslim kingdoms. The capital of Volga, Bulgaria, Bulgar, was a thriving city, rivaling the great centers of the Islamic world in terms of wealth and size. Bin Fadlan was impressed with the Viking physique, describing them as tall as date palms, blonde and ruddy. But after observing their hygiene practices, he also described them as the filthiest of Allah's creatures. This description may be a little unfair, especially when you compare Viking hygiene to other Europeans at the time. Despite the fact that the Vikings didn't wash their hands before eating, the Muslims were happy to trade with them, trading items such as fish oil, fox furs and swords. Sometimes Vikings would even travel as far as Baghdad to do the trading, completing the last part of the journey from the shore of the Caspian Sea by camel. If you're around my age and remember the Aladdin animated series, you may be surprised learning that the character of Ankuthma actually kind of historically accurate. To get an idea of just how much trade was going on between Vikings and the Caliphate, 125 million silver dirhams have been found in Northern Europe. It's over 300 tons of silver coins. If you want to learn more about this fascinating period of medieval history from a serious historian who doesn't make cartoon references, I've linked a lecture by Professor Thorin Johnson Harendahl of the University of Iceland in the description. So the far right has no legitimate claim to the Vikings, and for that matter neither does the left. The terms left and right originate from where people would sit in the French Parliament in the 18th century. They're still useful terms today to broadly define where people align politically. But it's a useless anachronism to apply those terms to a society that existed a millennium earlier. If anyone has a claim to the Vikings, it would be those Scandinavians trying to reclaim their heritage from the Nazis and their ideological descendants. And I mean people living in Scandinavia today, rather than people like me who may be genetically Scandinavian but have little in the way of a connection to Northern Europe. Scandinavian DNA is actually not that uncommon. In the 40 or so generations between the Viking Age and today, every single white person is descended from every successfully reproducing European alive at that time. Or to paraphrase Daniel Zadek of the University of Leicester, the answer to the question, am I Viking, is, well, yes, but so is everyone else. And if any white nationalists want to jump on that fact as some sort of a justification for Europe as a white homeland, remember that those 40 generations also include North Africans, Mongolians, and people from the part of the world we today call the Middle East, who had traveled to and lived in Europe over the past thousand years. And of course, the Vikings didn't see themselves as part of a European or even a Scandinavian ethnic group, but as members of chiefdoms or petty kingdoms, more akin to clans or tribes. Perhaps talking about Scandinavian ethnicity? Just another useless anachronism. History is messy and complicated. If we're going to reclaim the Vikings, we may want to ignore some of the more unpleasant aspects. I haven't mentioned it yet, but some of what the Vikings were trading for those silver dirhams were slaves. And we may want to keep some of the fake stuff too. Like Norse ruins is some kind of seminal European alphabet, the horn helmet is another relatively recent German invention, albeit a far less sinister one. We owe this helmet to the costume designer, Karl Emil Doppler. He designed the helmet for the 1876 performance of Wagner's opera, Der Ring das Nibelungs. Of course, no one watching this video was alive to see that performance, so most likely we know the helmet from a far more recent adaptation. I will do it with my spear and magic helmet. Your spear and magic helmet? Spear and magic helmet. Magic helmet. Magic helmet. Magic helmet. I would posit that there are the Vikings of history and the Vikings of fantasy. And indulging in a little fantasy is fine when it doesn't hurt anyone. If we want to keep the Vikings of Wagner and Asterix, because it's fun, let's do it. But the far-right fantasy of an all-white Europe isn't harmless. An all-white Europe can only be achieved through violence. This footage that you're seeing beside me is of the European far-right nationalist group Generation Identity, alongside Canadian activist Lauren Southern. The group had chartered a boat to disrupt migrant rescue operations in the Mediterranean. As a result of these sorts of actions, people who otherwise may have lived will drown. The far right may want Vikings for themselves, but let's not let them have them. Don't let the white supremacists have Forthark and attach their own meanings to the ruins. Don't let them have paganism. Don't let them have Norse mythology. And especially don't let them have heavy metal. To paraphrase a Tumblr user going by the name The Witch of the Norse, Nazis don't go to Valhalla when they die. 
The only place Nazis are going is into the claws of Needhawk to be skinned and devout. And that is metal.